You're listening to Cinematic Adventures, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. Good morning, Vietnam! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You're going to need a bigger boat. I feel the need, the need for speed. Roads. We're going, we don't need roads. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Vitus? We don't need no vices. I don't have to show you any stinking vices. You make me want to be a better man. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I wish I knew how to quit you. Love means never having to say you're sorry. He's looking at you, kid. Not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you can listen to a podcast, we'll be there. We'll always be there. And you can also find more of our content on themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but also some of our other shows, like the Multiverse Fancast and MF Uncensored. As long as... Can you stop doing sounds in the background? As well as some of our content, our articles, news, reviews, stuff like that. And, of course, the Misfit Faction store where you can buy your favorite Misfit Faction merch. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. And with me in the studio today is uh, Soundy McLoudington. I mean, Sean. Sean, like how that. Soundy McLoudington. I just thought of that. Yeah, Good for you. It, it wasn't bad. Sean, how are you today? I'm great. How about you? Oh, I wasn't sure if there was more. It was just I'm great. There's really nothing else I can be. There are yeah. plenty of other things you can be. Yeah. We're in our 30s. Adjectives are fun. We can be all sorts of things. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm sore. I'm cranky. Why are you sore? Just from living. I'm Thor. You're Thor? Well, it hurts. Yeah. There is nothing better than being in your 30s and the like. The most mundane things happen. Like When you're a kid, like you don't get hurt falling out of a tree, getting mm-hmm. hit with a baseball. Like mm-hmm. You can make like a list of all these things you did as children that didn't, that didn't cause permanent damage. <laughs> now as an adult, it's... Oh, I sneeze too hard. Somebody's listening to this going like, my kid broke his leg falling out of a tree, you bastard. He's fine. Right? Like, but nowadays... My kid's t- in a coma from being hit by a baseball, you son of a bitch. Okay, all right. Now now I feel bad. Thanks, man. I was trying to make a funny <laughs> joke, but... But if somebody's hit by a baseball, I'm like, when did you ever get hit by a baseball when you were a kid? Sports. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story, I hurt myself sneezing the other day and I was trying to make it funny. But anyway. <laughs> that is funny, actually, because I do the same thing. Yep. yep Sneeze well, and you're like, oh. Oh, God, something oh, hurts. that hurt. Now, speaking of being old oh, and really? being weathered. So today we are doing our very first edition of Who'd Win in a Fight, the episode, basically. Really? Yeah, we've never done a whole episode of Who Would Win in a Fight. Oh, been dreading this day forever. All right, so. Here it is. <laughs> today, today's episode of Who Would Win in a Fight, this is the streaming services edition. Oh, I, that was that was. Oh, cool. I like it. Okay, okay. see where you're going yeah, here. Yeah, you see where I'm going. So basically, we've talked at nauseum about yeah, uh, true. different streaming services and some of our pros and cons about them. Mostly Netflix, because you know a lot of the, our movies come from Netflix. We've mentioned HBO Max, Disney Plus, but we thought it'd be fun to kind of sit down and look at some of the bigger streaming services and and offer what we think are the are the good and the bad. Of those streaming services. We're not here to rag on anybody too much, but we are here to talk about, hey, money, like inflation stuff, the economy stuff, what streaming service would, if you, at the end of the day, you only could pick one, which one would it be and why? So wow. by the end of this episode, Sean and I are going to have at least one for ourselves. That's, that's a good one. So uh, we're going to start, we'll, we'll do maybe like two, take a break, come back and finish up. Sounds good, Sean? I think I can live with that. I think you can live with that as well. So let's start really where streaming started. The granddaddy. The granddaddy of it all, Blockbuster. (laughs) The original streamer. No, Netflix. We Technically, yeah, they were going in that direction. Yep. So let's talk about Netflix. Netflix, we're not going to go too much into the history of Netflix, but basically it started off as a a DVD mail service where you would actually uh, request a DVD or video game. Yeah, you still still can do it. If it's not you, called Netflix anymore. I think it's called. Oh, it's gonna bother me. Yeah, that's fine. I can't remember what it's called now. But they they actually optioned a blockbuster to buy them, and blockbuster oh, said they begged blockbuster to buy them. And blockbuster laughed. They said nobody's ever gonna want to like they they enjoyed the experience of going to and it, that is true. It is very true to a point, which makes it funnier because we just did our episode on Stranger Things and we didn't even touch base on the fact that they work in a video store. Yeah. But so Netflix comes out and it is insanely popular. And it wasn't until a, maybe like a year or two in, it feels like, when they first got online, that they started doing original content. Oh, oh, oh in terms of when they began streaming? Yeah. Or when they 
switched over from mailing to DVDs to streaming. What do you, when they when they started streaming. When they started streaming, yes. Their their main thing was look at all these old movies you can now watch. Yes. That was the key. It was, you know, the whole the whole model behind these streaming services trying to get a library of stuff to be able for the audience to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, the big thing about HBO Max, it had the entire library of Warner Brothers. So like you had all these old classic movies that they, you could watch. Netflix didn't have that, so Netflix had to get the rights to all these different you know, movies, old TV shows that you know you really couldn't watch anywhere else. So yeah. That was the key. I'm trying to remember what the first official original series by uh, Netflix was. It wasn't Stranger Things. No, 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 no. No, it's do 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 do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do do do. I'm sorry if you, you want to keep talking. No, while I, you, uh, so. Basically, Netflix really started the idea, and it was cheap too when it first started. It was only like eight bucks a month or something ridiculous like that. For, yeah, it was. It was. It was below. Sp- it was below ten bucks. It was. It was crazy. And um, they used to encourage the password sharing, the account sharing. Like they just wanted people, and then suddenly Netflix explodes. And Netflix is single handedly responsible for two things. One is the online streaming as like a as a like a like a main topic thing like a like the common people would do it like people so were, sorry go ahead. uh 2013 the first official original programming on Netflix was a supernatural drama called Hemlock Grove oh i remember but it the big the big one was in July of 2013 Orange is the New Black yes was their like their, their hu- first huge one. hit of original programming on Netflix so and Netflix then House of Cards oh, and yeah, yeah. Arrested Development so it's been almost ten years yeah. of original pro- of original product on Netflix, and it's only more recently that Netflix and others are being considered movie studios. Yeah, I honestly don't. I mean, there was the big uproar a couple of years ago when with the I, Academy. With, uh, what was it called? I can't remember. Where one of their movies won like best picture or best documentary best or something, documentary, something like that. People yeah. were making a big stink out of it. It really hasn't been a huge factor. Like since, like I don't think many of their movies they've done have really garnered any much award. But yeah, they're 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 in the they're in the business of making movies now, and Netflix is a movie studio. Honestly, when you think about it, it's, oh, absolutely, it's crazy that they've come this far. Now, Netflix has also faced a fair amount of controversy. Mm-hmm. We'll, t- we'll talk about that towards the end. But Netflix, like I was saying, it created two very important milestones in entertainment. One was the, the idea of streaming in the common lexicon. That was the word I was looking for, like yeah. pe- the general population. Because like people were, were always pirating movies. Remember when that was like the big thing? Before every movie, it'd show like, pirating movies is a crime. But uh, did you ever see Horrible Bosses? Yeah. The Jamie, Kennedy, or Jamie Foxx's character went to jail, and then you find out at the end it's because he was filming movies. That's why he went to jail. but And then it also created the idea of binging. Binging was not something that people did. You did not... you couldn't binge. I mean... The only thing you could binge was if you got the, the box set of a DVD. Set. Like, Sean and I have box sets of... I know I have some Supernatural, have all of Smallville. Heroes. We have Smallville. But that was a big thing when I used to work at the video store. You know, the smart thing was you would take a box set of, DV, of TV show and you would split it. You know, you'd have to pay the fee for each... DVD. So people would come in and buy the first three discs of a perfect example was 24 was a mm. huge show back then. And so that was that was a bingeable show because it was literally just continuing to continuing story. Right. So people would come in, rent the first three and I would see them like the next day. And they would come in, return those three, and and get the next, the last two of the season. I'd be like, "Did you guys do anything else yesterday?" Like, no, we just we couldn't stop watching. I was like, "Damn, okay, okay, you do you, boo boo." But think of how much money you spent doing that. Now it's like you're paying a set fee and you're just continually watching. It's crazy. Yeah, well, where we've come. Netflix also one of their biggest advantages was they made an exclusive deal with uh, the CW. Mm. So the CW, I think it was like. Two weeks after each of their shows ended, automatically goes to Netflix. Netflix had the exclusive rights to all those shows. Yeah. So shows like Supernatural, which is an exceptionally bingeable show, uh, all the Arrowverse stuff, mm-hmm. the Riverdale, like all those things went straight to Netflix. No, Smallville was never on Netflix. No, it was no. that was because that was way before they uh, the Smallville C- ended before that deal was that ever put into effect. Yeah. And then Hulu got the rights to Hulu, Smallville. Hulu has it. That's right. But. I, I like Netflix. I enjoy the, the original content on Netflix, but it is getting to a point where it's getting more and more expensive, and they're re- they're cracking down it's on 15, account sharing. It's $15 now a month. I only know that because I just switched it over to, you know, I had to switch credit cards and stuff like that on it. So it's $15 a month, which in the long run is not crazy mm-hmm. if you take advantage of it. That's the thing. So if you watch a lot of stuff on Netflix, which I'll be honest – 
obviously Stranger Things was a big factor. You know, other shows. You know, The Crown I'll watch every now and then. But there are still movies. I still binge watch Seinfeld when I'm bored. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I take advantage of it. Do I take advantage of it at a $15 a month level? I'd like to think I do. Because in the long run, 15 bucks, I'm not going to cry over that. But I agree with the, with the account sharing issue now, which hasn't come into effect yet, but they're going to start charging you more for anyone who is using your account that's not, I guess, in your household. It's, it's I don't know weird. how they're going to judge that. I think probably by device. By user or by device. Yeah. So, so right now, like if I'm on, because I have Netflix on my phone. Yeah. I have Netflix on my TV. Mm-hmm. I have Netflix on my laptop. But it's all under the same account. Exactly. But so if I log into my account mm-hmm. on my desktop, maybe at work, not that I ever do that. Or, and while my wife's home watching it on TV, mm-hmm. like, is it going to kick us out? Because two people are watching. Like, it's it's very strange. Well, that's the thing. Well, you already have that. I mean, there's already a the limit f- to how many people, people can, can be watching that. it. I think, I think the most is three, mm-hmm. which I have mine set to because obviously my parents use Netflix. I use Netflix. And my cousin uses Netflix. We all are on the same thing. So who knows? At one point in time, all three of us could be watching. We don't know. That's only happened to me once. Where I could not get into Netflix. Yeah. But for the most part, I've well, had here, no issue. Here's another example. When Melanie and I got married the first time, <laughs> COVID weddings. How many times? Twice. We went to uh, the Catskills. Mm. And we rented an Airbnb. You guys came the, the next day. That's right. They had, they had downstairs on the TV. It's like, enter your Netflix. Yeah. And you can watch Netflix while you're there. If I do that, is it going to be like, that's way away from your house that you've been Yeah. They haven't like, really released... The, the actual details. rules and details. I'm interested to see where they go with this because they can't piss. They can't do it to a crazy amount. Where now, I agree. Are people cheating the system? Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? I mean, there are there are you know. I know people who have all the streamers on their TVs. They don't pay for a single one because mm-hmm. they're just piggybacking off. You know, other people are guilty of it. We're I, guilty I, of it. I, I have it's your not Paramount. like you're doing anything illegal. Yeah. As long as the people know you're you're using their account, it don't matter. So like. I, I understand why Netflix is doing it mm-hmm. because they're probably saying to themselves, we're losing a lot of money here. You know, now will those same people be like so upset that they're going to not go into Netflix again or they're just going to be like, okay, I don't need Netflix. It was just an added bonus. So that's the other thing. Netflix, because of their binging culture, Stranger Things is the example. And we mm-hmm. mentioned it in our Stranger Things episode. They specifically waited a month, like 31 days between the end, like the in the middle of season four yeah. with the last two episodes because they knew <clears throat> that there were going to be people that just reactivated yeah. for because like there were times where I thought do I really need Netflix right now I just said the same thing like do I really need it I have so many other options yeah. and that's the other thing there's so much competition for them now and well because we'll it's crazy it. when you see these mega streaming deals these old TV shows are getting or even new TV shows that are hitting what we used to call the syndication mark mm-hmm. like f- I think three years now is, is is where you can technically be syndicated I think they still have that but now the big thing is streaming so like you know Netflix used to have friends so when HBO Max came along they paid a hell of a lot of money to get the streaming rights to friends mm-hmm. and that's the only place you can get friends streaming wise is HBO Max I know Hulu got Seinfeld for a time, and then now Netflix has it. Mm-hmm. So Netflix paid like half a billion dollars to get ne- uh, Seinfeld onto their streaming. I also wonder about what the syndication rights are because obviously for Friends, like the cast gets like millions of dollars every year for syndication. Uh, yeah, I guess. They, they make a ton of money, and they, they work that into their contract. Oh, they did? Okay, good. That was a big part of their contract that they were able to get massive syndication rights. Like they never had to work again. In all honesty, after that show ended, they could have like oh, no, absolutely. even like a lot of those actors, they do very small roles. Like Jennifer Aniston, I would argue, is probably the biggest star still out of that. Yeah, Corny Cox had the screen movies after. No, I'm sorry, she she had Cougar the Cougar Town show. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, Matthew gosh. Perry just could never find another show afterwards that would last more than a year. He yeah. had like so many failed pilots. Same with Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc had the one show of uh, episodes, which was really good. He and tried Joey too. Joey. And then he's got this new show on the, the basic situation comedy, which has been on for a couple of years now. So he's yeah. making good ones. But yeah. So Netflix though, created this binging culture and they, they are now trying to catch up with all this, all these other things. Like all the other streamers mm. that we watch do episodic weekly release. Yeah. Disney plus Hulu. I know Hulu. HBO max. It's, 
Do HBO Max does it? They do, yeah, for Titans and stuff like that. Oh, okay. They yeah. uh, they do their their week by week. So I know like Hulu just released the De- Derek Jeter uh, miniseries, Cat of the Captain, and it was basically two episodes a week. Well, that's what they did for the Orville. Every Friday was Orville Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm wondering if Netflix will go in that direction with like new seasons of all their shows. If they're they'll start... never do it. No, I don't think so because they are not. they are so well known for their binging. Yeah, but. Okay. I think the Netflix general population would just kind of. I don't. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. That'd be my opinion, I guess. But you know, there's there's benefits to binging, and there's there's no yeah. benefits to binging. The problem, my biggest problem with binging is a a I can't binge. I can maybe watch two three I at a time, binge. but also like especially when COVID hit, like I forgot what was going on in all those shows by the time it rolled around. <clears throat> I, I I can binge. My problem is if I binge too much, I get sick of the show and I just stop watching. That's fair. And then I, it takes me a while to get back into it. All but right, I so, can watch, I can binge watch a, sh- a season. That's yeah. about. So let's jump to our next streaming service. And arguably for me, it was the next one that I subscribed to only because it came with the subscription to the shopping aspect. Oh, that was the key. And that's Amazon Prime. Yeah. This I, is the one. This is the one streaming that is got an added benefit to yes. it because you're already a Prime member, which is the two day shipping, all that. Yeah. So it's just like an added bonus that you can also stream. I also really enjoyed the selection of Prime. I always forget about it though because I don't think about it. I'm actually not a huge fan of Amazon Prime streaming. I don't find. A, I mean, they have stuff, but I, I'm. I watched The Boys on it, and I started watching Invincible, which is another show on okay. it. But the boys is fantastic, so I'll, I'll always I'll justify my Amazon Prime yeah. membership uh, or streaming just for that. My dad likes Amazon Prime because it's a big selection of British TV shows and stuff. It, like it's that. got a very unique selection. Again, Amazon Prime Video is not their main focus. No, it and be. but it's still like they still put a lot of effort into it. Like you, like the X Ray mode where it like shows like the stars. Yeah. And it's, I, I like stuff. But like also, that. like you haven't seen. I don't think they've really gotten any like big. TV there's never been like oh my god Amazon got you know the this big TV show now the big thing Amazon got and this is huge is they got the rights to Thursday night football for the NFL right and that's going to be a big factor because they have not released yet you know how much is it going to go up is that going to be an extra fee to be able to watch that? Yeah, so when I first got onto Prime, again, it was for the boys. <clears throat> like I always forgot that I had Prime Video as part of my Prime membership. Yeah. So I remember I wanted to watch Shameless on there, but you had to get sh- – there was like an added Showtime yep. option for it. Like you basically would just put Showtime into your stuff. That's the thing I like about Amazon Prime. So when you click on it, when you type in a sh- something, whatever, movie, show on Amazon Prime, along the bottom, it'll list – it'll say, how do you want to watch this movie? It'll say, play on Netflix or play on Showtime or play on this. If it's on multiple – streamers it'll tell you you can say more watch options Mm -hmm. i like that about amazon prime the layout that they have with that because it it kind of tells you like oh if i want to watch this i got to get this streamer right so it makes the search a little easier that's the one thing i do like about amazon prime with the layout they have on that i agree but otherwise like prime is always the one i only it's for the boys yeah that's fair and but the big thing now is going to be the sports and amazon getting the, the the rights to Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. That's the only place you can watch it. Yeah. It used to be on the NFL night. Like now you have to be an Amazon Prime member to be able to watch Thursday night football. And I it's think that huge. the fact that now TVs can just stream these because originally if you wanted to stream something, there were one of two ways you could do it. Or excuse me, one of three ways. Some sort of phone or tablet. Mm-hmm. Then it was on your actual physical computer, whether it was a desktop or laptop. Or if you had an Xbox or PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, now TVs have all these apps built in. All I have it to has do to be is a smart TV. I, ha- I no, not even that. I pick up my remote and I have Xfinity. I say into it Netflix. Yeah, and it'll log me in. Yeah, and I, you know, it, well, that's also a thing that a lot of these cable companies are doing is they're giving you like f- a free year to these subscriptions as an added bonus to joining their cable company. Right. So, like, if you have HBO, like an actual subscription to the HBO channel on your cable, you'll get HBO Max for free. That's how my parents get it. Mm -hmm. They don't pay for it, but they have HBO on their cable. Netflix, a lot of these cable companies automatically give you Netflix for free for a year when you sign up. Or it's already built into the TV. Like, there's an actual channel that you click on it, and it becomes your Netflix account. Crazy. So, it's... it's, But I think that that has made streaming, or these streamers, even more mainstream. Even more popular. You say that, but, man, it... there's there's a contingent out there that is just like they can't function these 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 streamers like you know there's a lot of people out there who still like 
don't care for it or think yeah. it's just too I much. Like, I like cable TV. I like I, I like, like having cable TV. It. There's just nothing on. Feels like it sometimes. But all like right. when I when my contract's up for Comcast in a couple months, I'm ninety five percent confident I'm going to cut cable. Yeah, I just, I just got to figure out everything I want to watch and just make sure I can watch it without having cable. Right. So that's going to be the factor. All right. So let's talk about one that I think has a very unique history, and that's Hulu. So when Hulu first came out, it came out before every television channel had their own way of watching a show. Mm-hmm. This was so there. Let's let's That's jump right. back. Let's jump back, right? Yes. So one of my favorite shows of all time is Heroes. I love Heroes. Mm-hmm. Uh, say what you will about the quality of it as it went on. I still loved it. I loved the characters. Heroes had its own website on NBC.com that you would go and you could rewatch the episode after it aired. Hulu came out at a time where networks didn't you could maybe you could go on their website and watch something, but for the most part it was still brand new territory. Yeah. And Hulu came out and they were like, hey, you can watch all these shows that aired last night for free. Yeah. And that everybody's like, wow, that's great. Then Hulu started doing ads for free and then paid paid no ads. Mm-hmm. Okay, like I can watch I can watch a 15 second commercial. Yeah. Um and now Hulu has turned into purely a subscription. Like the evolution of Hulu of where it started to where it is now is wild. It's wild. And it's it's just basically now a regular streaming service and I mean it's owned by Disney. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's usually when you get like there's like a Disney Plus package. It's a Disney bundle. It's Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus for a ridiculously low fee. I mean, I think it's like thirteen dollars. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not free. much. So it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I agree with you. I forgot Hulu was the way to like watch these shows. You know, uh, on a streaming service, you know, after they just aired, if you didn't have DVR or anything like that, or if you didn't tape it, or if you didn't tape it, I mean, Hulu's been around since what, like early 2010s, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd even say maybe a little bit earlier. But you're right. Like then it it it, prog- it slowly turned into just a basic streaming service, and you're even now it's like a, a small fee for the with the ads and then it's like 10 bucks a month for you know no ads they are they do try to get you know big movies and tv shows on uh, they have smallville on, on there they do have smallville uh brooklyn 99's on there brooklyn 99 the orville like i mentioned yeah which is really good and they have a decent movie selection too yeah yeah oh yeah they're, not, they're, you know, you'll not, find something to watch on yeah, hulu no every now and then i'll click on hulu and and and, uh, and i'll find something and all right, so let's – speaking of – we've already kind of mentioned it, Disney Plus. Oh. But first, we're going to take a quick break. And when oh. we come back, we're jumping into Disney Plus, HBO Max, and Paramount Plus. But first, a quick break. Hey, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Ray's Energy Drinks. Ray's is a proud member of Rep Sports. And if you guys are looking for a little extra kick during your day, whether you need to tackle a workout or you need to get over that afternoon slump – you can always check out Raise Energy, and if you get the checkout and you enter the code CINEMATIC, not only will you be getting a 15% discount, but you'll also be supporting the network. So that's Raise Energy with Rep Sports. Code is CINEMATIC, C-I-N-E-M-A-T-I-C. All right, we are back, and we are talking about the next set of our streaming services, Who'd Win in a Fight? And we have one that, man, when it, when it dropped... The world stopped for like a hot minute. In our in our age group, I definitely agree with that statement. So Disney Plus. Now, they were talking about Disney Plus for a while. Yes. And Disney – so basically Disney was like, we're going to not only stream all the the main things we have, Star Wars, Marvel, some of the other big things. Yeah. But all also, their new movies, whatever. All their new movies, but also all of the old ones. All the old movies. For the, the, for the most part. For the like most part. 95% of their, their entire catalog. The, the original – Disney movies from like you know the Disney Channel back in the day. I mean, you, I distinctly remember you, me, Daniela, staring at the list of everything that was going to be on that when it launched, and we're all just salivating. Like, yeah, shows we hadn't seen in years. You know, Gargoyles, Goof Troop, Ducktales, Spider Man, uh, Spider like the old Marvel nineties, like X Men. The I mean, just the old classic animated movies, the old live action movies. I mean, everything. Again, not ever like not everything but enough yeah where we're all like sold and it was eight dollars a month now here's the thing though it had one of the rockiest launches really i don't remember it, the, I, it i don't have a trying problem to, with it. like i think i tried it the very first day oh really and it it was laggy oh. it was slow it was unresponsive it was crashing oh, I don't too many that. people they weren't really 
expecting because you can guesstimate how many people are going to yeah. use it, but you you're not going to know until it actually happens. Also, episodes on shows were out of order. They like I remember I wanted to watch the the Spider Man '90s show. Uh-huh. The episodes were not in the proper order. Oh, I didn't. At least with the shows I watch, I don't they think they I, fixed. They have since fixed that since sort of thing. Fixed. But Disney Plus, arguably of of the more recently launched streaming services, is probably the most successful. Yes, again, for a certain group of what you want it to be. I mean, it's perfect for for families. Absolutely. Because, boom. Click on the TV. Oh, hey, kid. There you go. Boom. It's whatever the new big Disney Channel show is right now. Or you want to show them the classics? Boom. Put on this. Put on Star Wars. Put on, you know, Iron Man. Whatever. You mm-hmm. know, you just, everything Disney is at the has at your fingertips. And now everything Fox. Not everything. Um, for the most amount. part, it's getting better and better because yeah. now they've also added their like the Disney Plus parental controls yes. where they have. Like, so now the you more, can have the the, the, the Daredevil the Netflix, and stuff like that. The Netflix shows are on there, I think, except for Punish. I don't know if Punish is on. I there. think it is. It is on there. Yeah, okay. but it's it's wild. Disney Plus exploded, yes. and I, I I will still say, arguably, it is probably the most successful out of all of them since. I don't know if it's the most successful, but I think it's. In, at least in my opinion, it's the most, it's the most I use. It's yeah. the one I go to the most. A very basic interface. It, it was very Nothing easy to hard. navigate. Yeah. A couple of little qualms here and there. Yeah. One of the weirdest things that they do is they do extended credits where yeah. it's like seven minutes of credits yes. I, for like I, the TV yes. shows. I noticed that. What was the first thing I watched? I think it might have been like... One of the Marvel shows, it was, I, I think. I think it might have been Hawk, Falcon this. and Winter Soldier. Yeah. And the show is ending, and I'm like, there's still eight minutes left, so there's got to be like an extra scene. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I, for the first episode, I sat through it all. I was yeah. Like, that was nothing. Yeah. So after that, I would just slowly fast forward, and I'm like, all right, nothing, 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 nothing. And I think it wasn't until the last episode when there was an actual clip yeah. Know, yeah, after the credits. But yeah, I don't get that. It's I don't weird. Know why it's like that. But, but I, I, I dig Disney Plus. I, I do enjoy Disney. it. It's got a great catalog. Like, if you want to go nostalgic, it's the way to go. Yeah. And they actually are coming out with original stuff. They did, you know, when it first launched, there was a great, you know, like mini series <laughs> documentary on like the creation of all, you know, Disney rides and stuff like yeah, that yeah, called I The remember. Imagineering Story. They just released a six part documentary on ILM, the making mm-hmm. of ILM, and that was very good. So they they have these these original stuff coming out and stuff and they have new they did you know they faltered with the whole like pay to see the movie like Mulan that was a backfire that was a, that was a backfire that that was just that was a COVID backfire it was a COVID backfire but it was just the wrong movie to do that with Oof. absolutely wrong movie to do that with yeah I still so, haven't seen it not me neither no if you had done that with Black Widow. I think there would have been a little well, better. Well, that was the issue. So we talked a little bit about streaming and syndication. And, you know, like if somebody watches Friends on HBO Max, do, is there residuals for anybody? I don't know. That probably Because obviously Cause when they, they created their contracts, there was no such thing as streaming. And that was the big issue with Black Widow. So yeah. really quick, just Disney controversy on that one. Black Widow star Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Scar Jo. Scar jo, who we love and we're big fans of. Um she had it in her contract that she would get residuals or she would get depending on the box office, which is not uncommon, especially like she's been in the, the MCU for so long. She's a big star now. Like she she's entitled to it. We we have no problem with that. But the problem is that was not taken into account for streaming. So when they re- decided to release it to streaming, mm-hmm. pretty much the same week as so – like, I, 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 I think it was almost the same day. They would still charge the $30. And a lot of people – this was also during COVID. So people were happy. Like I know Rob was happy to do – I got three – there's three of us in our house. Yeah. If we go to the movies, it's $15 a ticket, popcorn, popcorn soda, soda, like all that stuff. No, it's, and I'm, you're, not, you're not wrong. I don't blame them. We like going to the movies. We enjoy the experience, but also we're – you know, paying mostly for ourselves. Yeah. So when Black Widow comes out, though, she gets none of that money. All that streaming money does not go to her at all. Mm-hmm. She doesn't see a penny of it. And basically, she has to take a smaller paycheck um, because the ticket sales were lower. And she's like, they shouldn't have released it at the same time because people are going back to the movies. Mm-hmm. Like, we went to go see that in theaters. Yeah, we did. But so I get it. Even though. On one side, I'm going, Scarlett Johansson is also getting paid $15 million. It, it, didn't, it was just for, it was the to, it, for, the, for what people were going through at that time, it just was not the right time to be bringing up that argument. Yeah. That's something you could have brought up a little later. Mm-hmm. I, I understood where she was coming from. And we agree with her. Uh, 
and it was slimy on Disney's part because you know, but that's business, I and mean, that's what it is. The House of Mouse is notorious. Oh, they for are bad. They the, are bad. The way and... that they treat their their stars, it is it's rough. Yeah, but that's what it is. That was the biggest Disney Plus controversy. Yeah, about it. Basically, when they were releasing new movies. But yeah, for the most part, Disney Plus, like I said, is probably the the one streamer I go to the most. Yep. So going down the list next is HBO Max. Mm. I love HBO Max. I do too. So um, the hist- I was looking forward to this one. The history of HBO Max is interesting too because basically DC tried to launch a streaming service before Disney Plus or around mm-hmm. the same time because obviously Disney Plus had all the Marvel stuff. Yeah. So Warner Brothers was like, let's get ahead of this. We're going to do DC stuff. Mm-hmm. And it is it's, it was called DC Universe. And I, I subscribed to it. It was like $9 a month. Mm-hmm. And basically it had – all the DC catalog. It had all the original Superman movies, and it also had a new content. Titans was the first big one. Mm. Swamp Thing, Stargirl started there and then moved to the CW. So, like, it was really good for the time, but then, like, I was only really watching it for, for the one, shows, yeah. and because all those movies, I, and then they started announcing HBO Max, and they rolled it in where if you did DC Universe, I think you paid, like, Four dollars for HBO Max or something yeah. silly. Well, people forget that there was HBO Go before HBO. Yeah, I remember Max, that. Yeah, but it was free, but you had to obviously have a subscription to HBO. To right. Watch. And basically, it was the same stuff you would find on HBO Max. All the old HBO shows. You could mm-hmm. watch all the, the movies that are on HBO. All the specials, TV movies that they did over the years. So they they pretty much rolled that stuff into HBO Max. The biggest factor for HBO Max was when they were creating it. They were promoting the hell out of that. It was the only place you were going to be able to see Friends. Mm-hmm. It was the only place you were going to be able to see The Big Bang Theory. Fresh Prince, I think, was a, was a show. West Wing. And then obviously all the old the Warner Brothers movie catalog. And Looney then they, Tunes. And then they ended up canceling DC Universe, DC Universe and moving and all the, it all yes. to HBO Max, including so Titans. when you go to HBO Max and on the left, there is a, a section called Hubs. And it's all the different studios that are involved in HBO Max. So you got HBO, you got DC, you got Turner Classic Movies, you've got Studio, I believe, is on there, Sesame Street, yeah. and Looney Tunes. And then even bigger things like the big thing was was the Snyder Cut. Yeah, promoting that and like getting that, that was that, 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 that got big, people. Yeah, that, was, that got a lot that of people got a lot in there. Of people there. Mm. So, but now the issue is. Because I love HBO Max. Mm-hmm. I'm really worried about HBO Max with the Warner Discovery. Yeah, like, I don't know what's going to happen. This Warner Brothers thing is crazy to me. And obviously, we'll we'll discuss it when we do the Multiverse Fancast episode on the whole shabacle that is the DCU. Oh, my God. It is it is a crap. I mean, they're already saying that it's a... It's a it, it's a 50-50 if, if the Flash gets canceled or not. It's it's up in the air. It and really I, is. I, but that's also to do with Ezra Miller. Well, that's to do with Ezra Miller. I agree with you there. That's not to do with it. But... It's it, it's an easy thing for them to be like now. Oh, now we can just cancel it because yeah. now it's, we're just going to blame Ezra Miller. Yeah, it, it's but, wild what's um, going on there. I'm interested to see because I think there's going to be like no original program. As a, I, I got to read into it a little more before I can speak on it because like, we we didn't mention Discovery Plus because it's not really a streamer that we use. Nah. But, I know CNN is is tied in with that, so like if you like a lot of stuff on CNN, that would be a place for you. If you, to go. I like like Ghost Hunters and stuff like that. Yeah. That's a place to watch that stuff. Like there but. were some good documentaries that HBO Max used to have on there that were on CNN, but they've taken them off. Like they did a whole, you know, Tom Hanks produced a whole miniseries on like the '60s, the '70s, the '80s, the '90s, and like each season, each episode was a different factor of the decade. So you had one on movies or music or politics or whatever big thing was going on during that decade. And that was something like you could put on in the background and I could just, you know, eat yeah. dinner and not feel like I have to pay attention to it. And they took it all off, I think because of this whole discovery right. plus merger. So I was bummed about that. I hope though that when all this HBO Max and Discovery mm-hmm. Plus stuff when the dust settles, mm-hmm. we're not paying still paying for two separate things. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But unfortunately, look at Hulu and Disney Plus. Like you can yeah, bundle them, but you can bundle them and and but the thing about Hulu is it's a way for Disney to obviously it it's kind of the whole touchstone yeah. Disney thing again like, "Oh, well, you know, we don't want to have that on Disney Plus, put it on Hulu." Obviously, they have things on Disney Plus that are are above the R-rated you know, level now, not in movies as much, but with TV shows. But like now Daredevil they, the first R rated movies were added to Disney Plus. Deadpool. And Logan. Logan's on? I didn't yeah, know Logan's Logan on. Logan and I think both Deadpools. Yeah, I think both Deadpools are on there. Which is smart. Start, oh, yeah. start simple. Got it. I mean, you know. But now we're jumping down to Paramount Plus. So this Par- is my least used one. Yes. So Paramount Plus, and I'm going to tie this in with Peacock. So 
Both of them are streamers for their respective cable companies. So Paramount used to be CBS All Access. Mm -hmm. And that was basically the streaming service where you could rewatch all the CBS shows that are on now and also have, you know, not a huge selection, but a decent selection into the old, you know, old TV shows of yesteryear. And same thing with Peacock. Peacock is NBC's network, a streaming service where you have old NBC shows, old Universal, because NBC and Universal are the same company. So you can know old Universal Studios movies and stuff like that. They're not the greatest streaming apps in the world at all. Like mm-hmm. Paramount Plus, like when I go and watch old TV shows, like there's episodes missing. Yeah. Like there's like weird example, like there's an old show called Jag, which is the, you know, what oh, God, NCIS is, yeah, is yeah. spin off of. For, for I was watching it and I'm like I go to season three and there's only four episodes so it's like okay what am I paying for here you don't even have everything their movie selection is very limited it's really just for the Nickelodeon it's, it's, stuff Nickelodeon is the big factor for yeah. me like you can watch the old cartoons and stuff now when the new season of shows starts up it will gain momentum because that's where if I cut cable that's where I can watch NCIS that's where I can watch all the old all the CBS shows mm. same thing with Peacock if I cut cable that's where I watch all the NBC shows so there is a benefit to them but now in the summer when there's no sh- you know no shows are on there's yeah. just really nothing to them and then obviously Hulu is basically I guess where ABC is cuz yeah I watch if I miss holy moly or something happens I'll watch yeah. it there so like every, all three networks have their respective streaming services so like it, the options out there to cut cable, like, I'm, you know, these cable companies need to like wake up, mm-hmm. like they need to lower their freaking prices, or else they're gonna lose a lot of. Like, I'm literally gonna cut cable. It's ridiculous. More and how more expensive. people are. But the funny thing is, obviously, you need to keep internet. Mm-hmm. And when I looked, I'm like, it's still ninety dollars a month just to get internet into your home. For another twenty bucks, you get basic cable. So, I mean, it's... How much are you really saving at the end of the day? You're saving 50 bucks. Yeah. But still, it's still a lot. And it's like too much. Then, but then by that logic, why am I keeping the streaming services? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? It's tough, man. Adulting's hard. Adulting is hard. Adulting's hard. Entertainment in your adult years. <laughs> but but I would definitely... Peacock and, and Paramount Plus are definitely on the low end of the streaming services, in my opinion. All right, um, so we, we've mentioned all of our main streamers, all the ones we especially use. I yes. mean, there are probably there some are, others. There but are, there's a bunch of streaming Sling services. Sling TV, that, YouTube tried, but really didn't do too I well. I still don't even know what YouTube TV is. is I don't it, know, but yeah. I know Cobra Kai started there. That's where it started. Now yeah, that was like their Netflix, flagship, yeah. and yeah, it, nobody was watching it, but it was so good. So... If you were to pick, who would win in a fight, Sean, of the streaming services? All right. So. It is personal preference. It is totally subjective. Personal preference, then it's no question me Disney Plus wins. Okay. Because it just has the biggest catalog of stuff I would want to watch. That's fair. On a regular basis. Second for me would probably be HBO Max because there's a great movie selection on that mm-hmm. app. Like, I can find a movie I would want to watch. Then you got Netflix, then Amazon, and then the other two. That's for me. That's fair. I would go HBO Max first because I also liked what HBO Max did during COVID where it gave some breathing room to some of the movies that like Godzilla vs. Kong was like their big one. They wanted people to go to the movies to see it. Yeah. But they that's, also... That's stopping now. Yeah. They're, they're, they're but they not. also did not charge extra for any of those new movies. Wonder that Woman... Was- Godzilla vs. Kong. And if you read into this, into this whole merger thing, that was a huge money loss for them. Like but that was honesty, a big factor in why the the management team of Warner Brothers is no longer there. Yeah, but again, that was unprecedented times. It was unprecedented. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In the long run, that hurt them. It I was, think it, it was good it, for it, it was good them, for morale. It hurt them financially. Yeah. But at the end of the day, people remembered that, remembered and they remember it. the Disney Plus stuff. Yeah. No, I I agree with you. Like I had no. I would love that they did that. I wish the movies were better. Yeah. I liked Godzilla vs. I liked Godzilla vs. Kong. Wonder Woman was just a hot garbage. Yeah, and the, um, the more and more you think about it, the worse it gets. But in the long run, that set Warner Brothers back, and then obviously this debacle of DC just continually killed them. But you know, in all honesty, though, I they, can't wait for this. I can't wait to talk about this. Oh, it's Bullshit wild. Show. It's gonna be great. So we have. For me, it's HBO Max, Disney Plus, because mm-hmm. Disney Plus, pure nostalgia. But I do agree with you. Disney Plus is targeted at families for the most part. Yes. It's only now starting to get more of the adult stuff. It's getting more of the adult stuff. I'm just a, I'm just a sucker for nostalgia. Yeah. And that's um, why I love it so much. Then Netflix. Yeah. Hulu's bump it up a little bit for me because I'm finding good. more and more stuff yep. on it. 
and then Prime just for the boys, in all yeah, honesty. That's fair. But uh, Prime will, Prime, obviously, again, it's also at the time you're watching, like Prime will be big for me in the fall because football will be on. Yeah. And I'll love Sports. that. And be, uh, you know who we forgot about? Apple TV, which is still in its, its infancy. In, infancy. Yeah. You know, and the big thing going for Apple TV is Ted Lasso. Yeah, I've heard great and, things. And that show is fantastic. Yeah. I don't have Apple TV. You're not missing much. I know. You really aren't. There's really not much my, on there. I think my family has it. And they're like, just go log on to ours. And I was like, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> what are you talking about? I support my my $15 a month. <laughs> I The thing about Netflix for me, the Netflix to me has turned into the, what is it the word I'm looking for? The crime documentary streamer. A little bit. Like that's their big thing is there's finding these crime stories and making these like four or five part documentaries. And and there's a market for that. I mean, what was that? What was the uh, making the murderer a couple oh, years yeah, ago? Yeah, that was just, a big one. That was huge. Then, and they just did the Tinder swindler. Tinder swindler. Then during COVID, Tiger King. Tiger King. I mean, they're finding stories where it's like, I can't believe that actually happened. Yeah. And they're making these like really good crime documentaries out of them. And that's really kind of kind of been their big go to like the last two years. Not so much. And then they'll come out with an original movie here and there, an original show here and there. But like Stranger they've things. been big on the they've been big on the crime. You know, they've got Stranger Things, they've got the Crown, and the Crown has been huge for them. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the most decorated shows in a of long all time. time. Yeah. So, you know, Netflix isn't but yet they're hurting for subscriptions because of this whole sharing, you know, the you know, the logins and stuff like that. So you know, who knows? I, I'm really interested to see where they go with that, what they're going to make you pay, and what is it going to – what does it count? Like, is it going to be like you can only log into Netflix from your TV, and if you happen to log into it from your phone, you got to pay extra? Like, that's going to be so where – So confusing. You know, or can they track – like, this is your device. You have to register a device and say these are the only devices that can play on this account. Mm-hmm. So that means like – Oh, that would suck. What but, if I get a new phone? Well, then you just reread. You just there's got to be an option to register it. But like, you see what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so now like a TV in you know two towns away, who you did allow to use your account now can't because you didn't register their device. Womp womp. That's going to be interesting to see how they pull that off. I'm, right. I'm I'm really interested in that. So we'll see where they go. But we would love to hear your thoughts. So make sure if you guys want to interact with us, you can go on our Facebook page. You can find us. Uh, basically, type in the Misfit Faction. You'll find us everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We're all there. So make sure you guys check us out. Like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things. And yeah, this was a fun episode. I really enjoyed it. It was a little outside our wheelhouse, but it's I our liked it. I thought it was a good good open discussion for 45 minutes. Yeah. So that's going to wrap us up for today. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll be back next week. Will we? Maybe. Who knows? All right. Do 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 do.